Good evening, I'm Professor Michael, and you're watching Kini News, the show that brings you today's biggest stories. Lim Guaning was flanked by several Harapan leaders today to counter what he called were several big lies over the direct tender list. Controversy erupted in Parliament on Monday after Finance Minister Tengku Zafrul Abdul Aziz revealed that the previous Pakatan Harapan administration gave out 101 contracts worth a billions of ringgit without an open tender process. Did the revelation score a point for Perikatan National or was it an own goal? Uh, selepas ditekan oleh pemimpin Pakatan Harapan, juga mantan Perdana Menteri Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad dan juga rakyat Malaysia, Menteri Kewangan Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul Abdul Aziz akhirnya tunduk dan mendedahkan senarai 101 projek runingan terus bernilai 6.61 bilion ringgit yang didakwanya diluluskan oleh Kerajaan Pakatan Harapan dalam jangka masa 22 bulan. Kini kami tahu mengapa Zafrul Ingan atau Menteri Kewangan Ingan buat demikian sebelum ini. Ada tiga penipuan besar. Lim said Pakatan Harapan was only responsible for 5.3% of the 6.61 billion ringgit directly awarded contracts mentioned by Tengku Zafrul. According to the former finance minister, most of the 6.61 billion ringgit went to legacy projects, which amounted to 67%, and contracts for supplies and services, 26%, taken on during the BN administration. Ini BN punya, dia pula cakap salah kita punya. Yang sebenarnya hanya 352 juta ringgit untuk menjadikan jumlah kononnya 60.000 61 bilion ringgit. Keraguan kami telah ternyata dan terbukti dengan senarai 101 projek bernilai 6.61 bilion ringgit yang didedahkan oleh Kementerian Kewangan semalam. The Bagan MP listed five legacy projects, with the largest being the phase two of a Klang Valley double tracking project, which paid Daya Maju LTA T Sandiran Berhad 4.475 bilion ringgit. This deal was signed a day before Parliament was dissolved in March 2018 to a tune of 5.26 billion ringgit, and the contract was part down after the Harapan administration took over. Lim explained that the contract had to be renegotiated without a tender being called to avoid delays in the project, which began in 2016. <laughs> Sebanyak 790 juta ringgit. Lim pointed out that four contracts under the International Trade and Industries Ministry that Zafro listed were for ministerial events that took place in April 2018 prior to the change in government. As for the 31 supply or services contracts, which had to be continued, valued at 1.753 billion ringgit, Lim said these services usually involve specialized suppliers or a monopoly. For instance, the Communications and Multimedia Ministry had to rent a multiplexer and acquire the infrastructure and network facilities for digital TV at a cost of 254 million ringgit because it did not have a choice. Contract melantik My TV untuk perkhidmatan tersebut telah dibuat pada tahun 2014 semasa Kerajaan Barisan Nasional masih memerintah. Kontrak pengurusan operasi dan penyelenggaraan sistem Malaysian Emergency Response Services atau MERS 999 dengan Telekom Malaysia Berhad sebagai pembekal tunggal dengan nilai 94 juta ringgit juga merupakan perolehan dalam situasi yang sama. Lim also revealed that from the new directly awarded contracts by the Harapan government, half the amount was for a new solid waste transfer station in Jinjang Utara. He pointed out that this project came under the Housing and Local Government Ministry headed by Ampang MP Zuraida Kamarudin at the time. Mungkin lebih baik yang berhormat menteri yang berkaitan yang begitu lantang menafikan penawaran sebarang kontrak rundingan terus boleh menjelaskan apa sebabnya projek ini ditawarkan secara rundingan terus. So with Guan Hing passing the buck to Zuraida, how did she respond? Well, by passing the buck to someone else. Housing and Local Government Minister Zuraida Kamarudin claimed that she was unaware of the two contracts worth 170 million ringgit awarded through direct negotiation by her ministry during the Pakatan Harapan era. In a statement issued this afternoon, the former PKR leader said she would like to emphasize that the projects were approved without her knowledge. She added that the ministry would probe the issue. 
Yesterday, Zurada had insisted that she was not involved in offering any direct tender contracts when she headed the ministry under Harapan, which took over Putrajaya in 2018. One of the contracts awarded by Zurada's ministry was the 170 million ringgit solid waste disposable station at Taman Beringin, Jinjang Utara, Kuala Lumpur. It was awarded to Bumi Segar Sandirian Berhad. The second project, the maintenance of the ministry's financial and accounting system worth 500,000, was awarded to Century Software Malaysia, Sandirian Berhad. Meanwhile, responding to Zurada's statement on Twitter, PKR Communications Director Fahmi Fahdel shared a post taken from Zurada's Facebook page in 2019 of her announcing the Solid Waste Disposable Station project with a picture of her visiting the project site. Three zones in Kedah will be placed under an administrative MCO after midnight. Aman Jaya Kedah will be placed under an administrative enhanced movement control order beginning tomorrow in an effort to curb the spread of COVID-19 there. Senior Minister Isma Sabri Yaakob said three zones in Aman Jaya would be affected. They are Melo, Kenanga and Mawa. The declaration was made after the Special Minister approved the implementation of an administrative enhanced MCO in Aman Jaya effective from 12.01 a.m. August 28th until further notice. The senior minister in charge of security added that the order will affect a total of over 22,000 individuals. Nobody is allowed to enter or leave the areas under the lockdown and all residents will be screened. Ismail added that public areas such as mosques and places of worship will be closed during the lockdown period. However, shops that provide essential services are allowed to continue operation while other shops and factories must close. Only one member per family will be allowed to go out for the purpose of purchasing necessities. Meanwhile, commenting on a separate matter, Isma said individuals who violate the MCO will face the law without naming the case. It was reported earlier today that the daughter of a very important person was among those arrested in a police raid at a pub in Kuala Lumpur last Sunday for allegedly violating the recovery MCO. It is understood that the VIP is an opposition politician. The Health Ministry now believes that the highly contagious Tawa and Sivaganga clusters may have a common origin. Genomic sequencing has revealed that the Tawa and Sivaganga COVID-19 clusters are likely to have a common source of infection. Health Ministry Director General Dr. Noresham Abdullah said the analysis has shown that the virus samples from the two clusters not only carry the D614G mutation, the samples are also part of the same clad. The D614G mutation is believed by some experts to increase the infectivity of the virus that causes COVID-19. Meanwhile, Malaysia reported five new COVID-19 cases today, with two being imported cases. The three local cases all involve Malaysians in Malacca. You'd expect to see teenagers being lectured on how to behave, but today we got to see elected MPs being given a word or two on how they should act in Parliament. Parliament's second lower house session of the year came to an end today, but not before Dewan Rakyat Speaker Azhar Azizan Arun lectured MPs on how they should conduct themselves. Azhar said he had witnessed many instances where MPs did not follow the standing orders, which dictate they must not make remarks which are rude, sexist, hurtful, misleading, accusatory, ill-intended, petty or shallow. So, selalu sangat saya dengar, tapi saya bagi liwi sebab saya pun budak baru. Kalau saya ketatkan sangat, maka banyak yang komplain. Tapi itu peraturan mesyuarat, peraturan untuk kita semua. Kemudian kita lihat pula kepada peraturan mesyuarat yang, yang sama di paragraf yang lain. Mengatakan sesuatu pertanyaan itu tidak boleh dikeluarkan berkenaan dengan sifat atau kelakuan siapa-siapa melainkan sifat dan kelakuannya dalam menjalankan urusan-urusan jawatannya saja. Tapi banyak kali juga saya dengar perkara yang uh, lain mengenai sifat-sifat yang bukan mengenai sifat di dalam jawatan uh, dikeluarkan dan diperbahaskan bukan sekali malah banyak kali. Bila ditegur ditarik balik tapi dibuat semula. So itu macam intentional uh, Saya rasa itu pun kita perlu perhatikan. Itu skill untuk pertua. Ya, yeah? skill. Ya. Yeah. Coming up next, the man responsible for killing 51 innocent people in New Zealand has been sentenced. For killing 51 people, Brendan Tarrant will be spending the rest of his life behind bars.
A New Zealand judge sentenced white supremacist Brendan Tarrant to life in prison without parole on Thursday for killing 51 Muslim worshippers in the country's deadliest shooting, saying the sentence was not enough punishment for the wicked crimes. It was the first time a court in New Zealand had sentenced a person to prison for the rest of their life. Tarrant, a 29-year-old Australian, admitted to 51 charges of murder, 40 counts of attempted murder and one charge of committing a terrorist act during the 2019 shooting rampage at two Christchurch mosques, which he live-streamed on Facebook. High Court Judge Cameron Mendes said in Christchurch on Thursday that a finite term would not be sufficient. Your crimes, however, are so wicked that even if you are detained until you die, it will not exhaust the requirements of punishment and denunciation. The judge asked Tarrant before handing down the sentence if he had any comment. Dressed in grey prison clothes and surrounded by guards, Tarrant nodded when asked if he was aware he had the right to make submissions, but he did not speak. Prosecutors told the court earlier that Tarrant wanted to instill fear in those he described as invaders and that he carefully planned the attacks to cause maximum carnage. Tarrant, who presented himself during the hearings, did not make submissions, said through a lawyer in court on Thursday that he did not oppose the prosecution's application for a life without parole sentence. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern said she was relieved that the person will never see the light of day. Ardern praised survivors and families of the victims who gave emotionally charged statements in court this week, calling for Tarrant to be sentenced to life without parole. New Zealand Foreign Minister Winston Peters called for Tarrant to be deported to Australia to serve out his sentence. Before Tarrant, triple murderer William Bell was serving the longest sentence in New Zealand with a maximum non-parole prison term of 30 years for his 2001 crimes. Messi has told Barcelona he wants to leave, but will they let him? Lionel Messi's whole club football career has been played at Barcelona. But now he's been asked to leave with immediate effect. He may be its record goalscorer and have won 34 major honours there, but Messi has put Europe's major clubs on alert with a transfer request sent by fax on Tuesday. The 33-year-old wants to exercise a clause in his contract that would enable him to leave for free, but Barcelona aren't letting go of their prized asset so easily. It says that possibility expired on June 10th, and the only way out for him now is if another club pays his release fee of 828 million US dollars. That would break the current world record transfer fee three and a half times over. <laughs> Hundreds of fans gathered outside the club's New Camp Stadium, pleading with Messi to stay. It's the latest twist in what is already a turbulent period for Barcelona. Humiliation by Bayern Munich in the Champions League this month left it without a trophy for the first time since 2012. Reports from Spain say that new head coach Ronald Koeman told Messi that his quote, privileges are over, which appears to have been the final straw for the player. Messi has been named World Player of the Year a record six times and held Barcelona to four European Cups, but has grown increasingly unhappy with the last 12 months with how the club is being run. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kindytv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. I'll be back with more tomorrow, same time, same place. I'm Prasad Michael. Thank you for watching.